On this slide are the three examples shown earlier on configuration. Note the local monitored instance in the left-hand picture and the remote instances in the two right-hand pictures. In order to do this connection, you will need, first, the server authorization of the monitored server, along with the TCP IP or DNS name. Two, you'll need the instance owner, user ID and password. Three, you'll need the DB2 port for TCP IP connection and communication. Now to find this port information, refer to the next slide. Follow these steps to get port information. First, log on to the monitored server with DB2 instance owner and password. Then issue a DB2 get instance command to verify the instance name. Next, issue a DB2 get dbm config and pipe it to a grep on service or svce. You should get a single line showing the service name. Finally, issue a grep on the service name in the Etsy services directory. You will get the port number for TCP IP connectivity. So to begin, issue a PE config back on the PE server using the DB2 admin user ID and password for the DB2 LUW used by the PE server. After an integrity check, you'll be prompted for adding an instance. This is either a remote or a local instance. In this example, we are adding a remote instance. You'll be prompted for the DB2 instance name and the TCP IP name or DNS name of the server. Note that in this example, it is a local instance added so that the default is used. You'll be prompted for the port which we obtained earlier. Next, a prompt for the alias name used by PE client. Be sure that a meaningful name is used instead of something generic with no meaning, like calling it DB65. Next, enter the DB2 admin user ID and password for the monitored instance on the monitored server. You'll be prompted for the password twice. You need to specify a table space path on the PE server for collecting performance data. It is recommended that you use the default. And at this point, you will also be prompted for the time zone for the monitored instance. As mentioned before, event monitor events are collected along with snapshot information to the PE server. And as you might recall, these events can be gathered in either a shared file system or on a file system on the monitored server, which are picked up by the PE server. This is where the file system on the remote server is specified. In this example, we said we want to specify a shared file system. Then we are prompted for the shared file name. This is where the remote path for the shared file system is specified. For more information on this event monitoring of file systems, refer back to the uh, charts that were shown on foils uh, 14 and 15. Unless you have the OS config for, for CMON agent uh, installed on the monitored server, set this to no. This concludes the first phase of database connectivity. We now move to the second phase by adding the monitored instance. Using the command addDB or addDB command. But before we can do this, we need to figure out the server number in the PE server configuration which is done with a list command. So after we performed the server connectivity portion earlier, we see the PE server assigned an ID of 1. We will use this 1 in the add db command. In this example, we are adding a database called boo with an alias of boo to the PE server. The format for this command is add db, instance ID number, database alias, database name, and the remote database alias. And that is the remote name as it would be on monitored instance. Hence the re reason that we're repeating this database name called boo three times. We move to step four, which is where we turn on event monitoring. This is a very simple step, but it can have very devastating results. 
in the amount of data collected in the event monitor file system. So unless you have a lot of space, only use event type 1, which is deadlock event monitor with details. The evmon command is used to turn on these events. The format is evmon instance ID number database alias event type. As we mentioned before, the instance ID number of what we set up in this example was 1. And in this case, we're turning on everything, so we're going to be using event type 3. Once it is active, you can go back to the list command, uh, and you can look at that instance ID by issuing a list 1, and you should see the very extensive list of connectivity information. You can use a simple list command, and it will give you all of the instances that are set up on PE server. However, by further drilling in and putting the instance ID number, such as this case in this example, list 1, you will see a lot more details as far as how the connectivity works with PE server. The final step is by far the absolute simplest, and that is starting the PE server with the command PE start. We're looking for these alive messages, so as we go through the, the screenshots, I'll point them out. Here's a screenshot from the start, and continuing on to the next foil, you can see that it says down at the very bottom that the status is alive. After starting the PE server, the PE server will not come back to a command prompt, so you will need to hit enter at this point. Only press the enter key after you see that alive. In this case, it says 2 slash 2. It can be uh, any number because these numbers refer to the number of monitored instances plus 1. I hope this helped to make your PE server installation go smoothly. Thank you.